in this video we're going to focus on how we can put in data labels outside or inside depending on how big this slice is so if you have a smaller slice in that case we want to force it outside so let's start to look how we can do this so let's start to look how we can add the data labels inside or outside of a pie chart depending on the size of the pie chart so what we're going to do here, first of all, is get our boiler template, which you can find here on chartgs3.com, getting started, this specific link here. And once you're on here, scroll down and just copy this entire chunk of code. Once you copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So once you copy that, we're going to put it all in there, and then I'm going to cut this out, put that in here. Save this, but we'll make sure that this will be of 80%, so we have a nice large chart. All right, now I'm going to convert this into a pie chart. So I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to say here this will be a pie chart. Save that, and then remove the scales because a pie chart doesn't work with scales. Save, refresh. All right, as you can see here right now, the chart is slightly too large, so I'm going to reduce the size of it to 50%. That is more better. All right, we have this now. What we want to do here is add up the data labels. And for that, we're going to use the data labels plugin. That's this one here. So make sure you go to cdnjs.com and just search for the charges plugin labels or data labels. Specifically, this one here is the data labels. So I'm going to use here version number 2.0, which is the latest one. I'm going to copy that. And once I copy that, I'm going to put it in here. I want to make sure it will be pasted after we load the chart.js library because the chart.js library has all the values and this is dependent on these values in here. Once we did this, if we save this, it will not yet work. As you can see here, nothing works yet. Why? We didn't activate it. So we're going to register that one by saying here, after the options, we're going to say plugins and then we're going to say here, chart with capital C, data with capital D, labels. All right, so once we have this, what we want to do is we, want, we have this now activated and refresh. There we are. So now we have the values in here. So what we want to do as well is we want to make sure or we want to filter out. So if a value would be of a certain item or at least if the value would be too small or let's make it very easy below a certain threshold, let's say below three. In that case, we want that to be shown here outside. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, we're going to say here, we're going to use here the plugins object. Then we're going to say here, we have the data labels object because this is now allowed because we have the registered here. We're going to put it in there. And then what we're going to say here, we're going to use the formatter. And the formatter allows us to control the options uh, or how we want to display the value or what value we want to display. So what we want to do here, make a condition. So we're going to say value, the formatter is a callback functionality. So we can do it like this. And then we have here the arrow function expression. So within here, if I do just a console log, you will see here, if I say value, save, refresh, open up the developer tab, you get all the values here. So I'm going to extract this one here. And of course you could convert it into percentage, but then you need to have the total sum of the value divided by that, or at least the value divided by the total sum. So what I want to do here is just very simple. I'm going to say here return. What we're going to return is basically here. Um, we're going to grab here the value itself. So I'm going to just return the value. If I do this, you will see nothing really changes. So that's just normal. However, what I want to do now is we just create an if statement. Say if value is below, let's say below three. In that case, I want it. Uh, to return well what i would say is maybe we should be above or equal to three then we want to return it else we do just do nothing so we're going to do it like that if i save this now refresh you can see here now it all works because we are always showing a value of three and above so what you can do is here well let's change this let's make this two so we make here another one we put it on number 1.5 save refresh and all right interesting we still are getting that so we say if the value is above this return uh all right let's double check this 
all right so this is just a mistake of mine sorry what truly happens here is it basically by default always returns the value so what we need to do is we need to force return a blank value so we're going to do here a blank value and this one here should be if it's below number three save refresh so as you can see here now it doesn't show the values in the pie segments or slices so now what we want to do is we want to put in another item and basically there is a very nice plugin but that plugin is not fully developed so that's why we are using two separate plugins so this is the next plugin that we're going to use we just call the chart.js plugin labels so don't get confused with the other one we just called data labels they are basically two different plugins and you can see and how can you distinguish them one here has the initials of the person who forked this uh, plugin and we developed it because this was not developed for chart.js3 and eventually someone developed it and specifically the person is called uh, david violante if i'm if i pronounce it correctly or david violante it's one or the other i guess so this is a plugin we're going to use as well so don't get confused with the other because i know that some people were confused with my videos where they didn't carefully read the data labels and the labels so make sure you don't make that mistake so we have this one i'm going to copy this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just put it in here and you will see that this will instantly trigger so i'm going to copy that and this is what i will do is just put that in here i guess just a script tag i'm just grabbing the script tag here i'll cut out this and oh i see i have a double script tag here so make sure you remove that one and this here i'm going to put in the url put in here and all the excess code i can delete save this and there we are put that all together so it's nice organized save refresh oh not here there so it takes some time now because one of them is what we call an unpackaged item so it just loads multiple items and as you can see here it immediately triggers it and the reason why is you can see the items being shown here and um, you can see here the percentage value and the, uh, one point i guess which one is the 1.2 is supposed to be two items here being shown so what is very important here is this by default it shows here a percentage value we don't want that and i'm just going to grab the standard value so what we want to do here first of all i want to activate this plugin or sorry it's already activated but what i want to do is i want to get their special plugin options which is called in the plugin you can say labels as you can see here same like the labels plugin it is the same object name so then what we're going to do here is we want to first position this outside and by default it converts everything into a percentage so i'm going to say position then string value outside and once we have this refresh you can see here now it's being shown outside all right and you might note that maybe it tends to go quite near to the top bottom or being clipped off that can happen if especially if it's here you will clip it off a little bit so what we're going to do is to make sure that this doesn't happen we're going to say here layout i'm going to put a padding around the chart area I'm going to say you enter and i'm going to say here padding and this padding will be let's say 12 pixels save that refresh and then we have additional space here all right so this looks fine and i feel like maybe we need a little bit more here maybe 2015 all right interesting of course it just doesn't grab here the item am i correct layout oh sorry uh layout that should be it i don't know how i managed to do that one anyway all right so now we get some space here that looks fine we have here there there although here we probably have to use a special video for that i have a video for that how we can put a margin between these two areas here however we can also remove this item here one or the other so it's up to you but you can see here there's a chart area what happens if we do a layout the very top is being triggered and not between here so there's a trick for this i have a separate video for that one i'll show you later on so once we have this what i want to do here now is i want to make sure that there's another functionality and basically it will be very similar to this here so i'm going to say here um let's do first of all some padding here on the outside so we have a little bit we're a bit away from the slices so we're going to say here we're going to say outside padding 
number four. If I save that, you might see here slight, slight difference. Not really that much. I'm going to enter. I'm going to do another one. Is the text margin that will give us additional space between the slices. Let's put six. If I refresh, there we are. I guess we could even remove this one here outside panning. There we are. So next, what we want to do here is we want to have here the rendering and then only show not the percentage but the value if the condition is correct. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to put a comma here and then we say here render and if I render here I'm going to do here a CTX and let's do a callback. This is a callback functionality so we have the function error expression console log. Then we're going to say CTX save refresh open developer tab we get all of these values here as you can see these are all the values here and what we want to do here value percentage and the data set in this case we just want to grab the value of this so if i do this dot value save refresh you can see all the values exactly the same and it doesn't return any value here by default so that's nice so what you can do now is we're going to say here return let's do this one first return this value save refresh all right so now it's showing every single value but now i want to make an if statement which is best which is exactly the same here so we're going to say if value and this one should be like this so if value is below number three or any value you want to put in here based on their condition and then we want to return this and there we are save refresh oh all right, interesting. We get a mistake here. Um, let's see. Am I missing a comma? Let me just double check here quickly. Value is not defined. CTX value, of course. This is not allowed. We need to have CTX value. Save, refresh. There we are. And now we can see it's shown here. Of course, it will not be exactly in the center. This is the only downside of it. But this is a one of the best ways to do it or at least the easiest way so what we can do here is we can hide the legend so you can see plugins if i say here, legend display false save as you can see here this will work or and let's or let's test this if i do here if i do this back on four i say this one will be 1.5 save refresh and you can see here now the structure changes nicely all right so this basically works what i want to show you at least is another specific video if you want to have a space between our legend here so if i set this back on true we want you might want to have space here so if you want to know how to add space here between i'm going to recommend you this video here is how to add a legend or how to add legend of a, sorry how to add a margin in the legend in chart.js which will basically give us space here below or above depending on what you want